Hey everyone, uh, this is uh, Dr. Mungli here. So, uh, question for today is a 57-year-old man has crushing substernal chest pain for several hours. Upon admission to the emergency department, physician diagnosed him with acute myocardial infarction. Subsequent testing in the coronary care unit reveals that the patient has significant hyperhomocystinemia. Which of the following, uh, which, which may have contributed to his infarction? Chronic administration of which of the following will lower his serum homocysteine levels and possibly reduce his risk of subsequent infarction. So basically the diagnosis is given here and this is a case of homocysteinemia. So there is a homocyst homocysteinemia case here and the question that is asked is what you need to supplement to this particular patient so that subsequent myocardial infarction can be prevented. Okay, so in order to answer this question, so you really need to have a basic understanding about uh, methionine and homocysteine metabolism and then we can come to the answer there. So once I explain the uh, basic metabolism, so you'll get your answer. So let's directly jump into the details on metabolism of methionine and uh, homocysteine. Basically, I'll be explaining you the fate of homocysteine. Now the methionine which is an essential amino acid so whenever it is taken so it will be become it will participate in polypeptide synthesis that is protein synthesis. Some of the methionine will be converted into S-adenosyl methionine and this S-adenosyl methionine it will act as a methyl group donor in methylation reaction and be converted to S-adenosyl homocysteine. Now the S-adenosyl homocysteine by S-adenosyl homocysteine hydrolase enzyme that is SAH hydrolase it will be converted into homocysteine. So during that time there will be release of adenosine. So S-adenosyl homocysteine will be converted into homocysteine and adenosine by S-adenosyl homocysteine hydrolase enzyme. Now the homocysteine it has got two fates now. It all depends on what is the need of the cell. So homocysteine can go into methionine formation and that is a methylation process. So it can go into methionine formation. So homocysteine going into methionine formation you need methionine synthase enzyme. And this methionine synthase, it needs a methyl donor and that methyl group donor is methylcobalamin. So methionine synthase, it takes methyl group from methylcobalamin and methylcobalamin is now is converted to just cobalamin molecule because it has donated its methyl group. Now it is, we need to convert cobalamin back into methylcobalamin. So cobalamin has to be brought back into methylcobalamin so that sufficient methyl cobalamins are available for other methionine synthase enzymes to convert homocysteine into methionine. So the regeneration of cobalamin into methyl cobalamin needs a methyl group donor again and that methyl group will be donated by N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate which is a folic acid, acid derivative. So N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is giving its methyl group to cobalamin that's when cobalamin is converted to methyl cobalamin and that is how your our body will regenerate methyl cobalamin and that methyl cobalamin can be used by methionine synthase while converting homocysteine into methionine so this is the methylation pathway for homocysteine now N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate means uh, tetrahydrofolate that is released here it can go into one carbon metabolism. So there are plenty of one carbon uh, derivatives that is N10 formyl tetrahydrofolate, N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate, N5 formyl tetrahydrofolate. Different types of tetrahydrofolate derivatives are there including this tetrahydrofolate converted into N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. This is done by methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase a methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme that is MTHFR 
is going to convert tetrahydrofolate back into methyl N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. Anyway, so overall homocysteine is converted into methionine by methionine synthase. For that, we need methyl cobalamin and we need N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. Now, homocysteine can go down into cystothionine formation and later into cysteine formation that is shown down here. Homocysteine is converted to cystothionine by an enzyme called cystothionine beta synthase enzyme. This cystothionine beta synthase enzyme needs pyridoxal phosphate as a coenzyme which is a derivative of pyridoxin. Now once you get cystothionine, cystothionine will be converted to alpha keto butyrate and it releases cysteine, amino acid cysteine which is a non-essential amino acid. So now the note that cysteine is a sulfur containing amino acid, methionine is also a sulfur containing amino acid. Methionine is an essential amino acid, cysteine is a non-essential amino acid. As long as you take methionine in the diet, so you need not worry about synthesizing cysteine provided we have sufficient vitamin B6 and normally working cystothionine beta synthase because homocysteine which has got sulfur now derived from methionine so that sulfur can be given to cysteine here. So this pathway here that is conversion of homocysteine into cysteine this pathway we refer it as transsulfuration pathway means sulfur is transferred from methionine into homocysteine and homocysteine is transferring sulfur to cysteine that is why this pathway is called as transsulfuration pathway. So homocysteine going into transsulfuration pathway you are making cysteine here. Carbon skeleton is released as alpha ketobutyrate and that alpha ketobutyrate will go into succinyl CoA formation, propionyl CoA, then succinyl CoA and that gets into gluconeogenesis or it can get into TCA cycle. That's the fate of alpha ketobutyrate. Okay, now let's come to homocysteineuria or homocysteinemia. Now there are three types of homocysteineurias that is type 1 homocysteineuria which is also called as classic homocysteineuria. And the classic homocysteineuria is because of defect in cystothionine beta synthase enzyme. Now the kind of defect that you see in classic homocysteineuria that is type 1 homocysteineuria is cystothionine beta synthase it, it has de decreased its affinity for pyridoxal phosphate. So it means homocysteine is not entirely converted into cystothionine. It means there will be elevation of homocysteine in type 1 homocysteinuria which is also called as classic homocysteinuria. Now when the homocysteine is elevated, if the patient has got sufficient methylcobalamin and sufficient N5 methyl tetrahydrofolate, some of this homocysteine can be converted into methionine so that can also lead to elevation of methionine. So that is why in type 1 hyper homocysteinemia, uh, homocysteinuria or type 1 homocysteinuria you can see significant elevation of homocysteine and to certain extent there will be elevation of methionine here. Now this is a defect in transsulfuration pathway because cystothionine beta synthase is defective here and vitamin B6 can be deficient or defective that can give rise to elevation of homocysteine. Now let's move on to see what if there is a defect in methylation pathway that is conversion of homocysteine into methionine which needs methionine synthase, methylcobalamin, N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate which the concentration of that is maintained by methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme. What if there is a deficiency of methylcobalamin? What if there is a deficiency of N5-methyl tetrahydrofolate? Or in general, what if there is a deficiency of tetrahydrofolate? What if there is a mutation in a gene coding for methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme itself? So in all these conditions, there is an increase in homocysteine because methylation of homocysteine into methionine will be decreased. That will also give rise to homocysteinuria. This kind of homocysteinuria we refer it as type 2 homocysteinuria and type 3 homocysteinuria. Type 2 homocysteinuria is because of deficiency in methylcobalamin and type 3 homocysteinuria is because of 
म्यूटेशन इन ए जीन कोडिंग फॉर मेथाइल टेट्राइड्रोफोलेट रिडक्टेज एंजाइम ओके सो वी हैव सीन थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ होमोसिस्टिन्यूरिया टाइप वन होमोसिस्टिन्यूरिया इज बिकॉज ऑफ डिफेक्ट इन सिस्टोथाइन इन बीटा सिंथेस टाइप टू होमोसिस्टिन्यूरिया इज बिकॉज ऑफ डेफिशेंसी इन मेथाइल कोबालामिन and type 3 homocysteinuria is because of deficiency of tetrahydrofolate especially n5 methyl tetrahydrofolate that's because of defect in methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme so in these two types of homocysteinemia uh, homocysteinuria that is type 2 and type 3 there will be elevation of only homocystein methionine it is not elevated in fact it will be decreased now what all the signs and symptoms that you see in homocystinuria so the common homocystinuria here it is cystothionine beta synthase pyridoxal phosphate that is deficient or pyridoxin is deficient other types of homocystinuria is beta vitamin b12 is def, uh, deficient or tetrahydrofolate is decreased here now whatever the types of homocystinuria it is so the patient will have morphonoid habitus means the physical signs and symptoms will be similar to marfan syndrome means the patient will have arachnodactyly disproportionate body so the patient may have um, hernias and the patients may have pectus excavatum pectus, pectus carinatum so this kind of morphonoid signs and symptoms can be seen in homocystinuria but apart from that because of the elevation of homocystein patients will be at risk of stroke and myocardial infarction why do you see stroke and myocardial infarction in homocystinuria cases it's because elevated homocystein it will interfere with the collagen lay down in the endothelium it will interfere with the endothelial membrane function it will cause damage to the endothelium it will lead to lipid peroxidation it will lead to thrombotic effect platelet aggregation and all this because of variety of effects like this so there will be aggregation of platelets so thrombogenic effects will be there so platelet aggregation will go on and that can lead to thromboembolism and this thromboembolism can be seen in veins it can be seen in arteries that is why patients with homocystinuria they will have thromboembolic episodes in arteries and veins giving rise to strokes myocardial infarction that is there in the case that is without we are talking about in the question now other than this other than the strokes myocardial infarction morphon morphonoid uh, habitus so the patients will have lens dislocation in homocystinuria so the lens dislocation most commonly it will be infero medial direction that is downward and medial direction of lens dislocation apart from this patients with homocystinuria will have mental retardation why mental retardation in homocystinuria it is because s adenosyl homocysteine which is not means um, the conversion of s adenosyl homocysteine into homocysteine and adenosine here now whenever there is elevation of homocysteine so homocysteine will go back into s adenosyl homocysteine formation and that will lead to consumption of adenosine in homocystinuria so it means there will be decrease in adenosine concentration and note that in the central nervous system adenosine is acting acting as a cns depressant it is a new it acts as a neurotransmitter it means it acts as a inhibitor in neurotransmitter so when the adenosine is decreased excitatory function will increase basically the excitatory neurotransmitter will predominate and that can give rise to change in the neuronal metabolism that is one of the reason why homocystinuria patients will have seizures convulsions and also they are having decreased iq going into mental retardation patients with homocystinuria they will have osteoporosis so there are so many signs and symptoms here which will differentiate marfan syndrome from homocystinemia and that is homocystinemia patients will have thromboembolic episodes with myocardial infarction and stroke they will have osteoporosis these patients will are more prone for mental retardation uh, convulsions so seizures and their lens dislocation is in downward and medial direction okay now with this signs and symptoms let's move on to see the laboratory findings like what all the tests that we are going to do some of the tests which are non specific but you can use them as screening methods or so uh, we can do a sulfur containing amino acid estimate means the quantitative methods 
or sorry, in fact, it is qualitative method that is cystine and methionine estimation in the urine sample by cyanide nitroprusside test. We can do Guthrie test, which is generally done for phenylalanine, leucine, and methionine. But there will be a lot of false positive and false negative uh, results here. So we can estimate uh, the levels of cystothionine beta synthase enzyme itself. So that will give a definite diagnosis. And also we can measure homocysteine levels in the blood. If the homocysteine levels in the blood is elevated, then you can measure pyridoxine levels in the blood just to see if there is a pyridoxine deficiency. And also we can measure methylcobalamin levels in the blood, folic acid levels in the blood. Okay, so these are some of the investigations that we can do in homocysteinuria cases. Once the homocysteinuria is diagnosed, so let's talk a little bit about treatment. So the homocysteinuria can be treated by giving pyridoxine. Pyridoxine is the main choice of medication in homocysteinuria. So the patients with who are sensitive to pyridoxine, so homocysteine will be converted to cystothionine, cystothionine is converted to cysteine and alpha ketobutrate. So that will decrease homocysteine levels significantly. Along with the pyridoxine, we can supplement cobalamin and uh, folate. So the folate and cobalamin, that is vitamin B12, can be supplemented with the pyridoxine. Now along with this treatment, so th this is how we can take care of homocysteine level. So the secondary line of management can be, you can give aspirin or you can give aspirin, clopidogrel or aspirin with along with uh, dipyridamol. So these are the ones which will decrease platelet aggregation and thereby try to decrease thrombotic episodes in homocysteinuria cases. What you do in patients who are not sensitive to pyridoxine? Pyridoxine insensitive homocysteinuria cases. In pyridoxine homo res sensitive, sorry, resistant, I am sorry about that. Pyridoxine resistant homocysteinuria cases. So they are not res uh, responsive to pyridoxine during that time we will give low methionine diet, diet containing low methionine and also we can supplement betaine to these patients because betaine it is an alternate, it will be used to methylate homocysteine into methionine by betaine homocysteine methyl transferase enzyme. This is an alternative route to take homocysteine back into methionine that's why betaine supplementation will also uh, help in the reduction of homocysteine and this we are going to do in pyridoxine insensitive patients. So there is pyridoxine sensitive patients, your pyridoxine is the choice and then along with that cobalamin and uh, B12 can be given and in pyridoxine insensitive cases, so low methionine diet along with betaine can be supplemented, thrombotic effects can, uh, episodes can be decreased by prescribing aspirin clopidogrel or aspirin along with dipyridamol. This is all about homocysteinuria. I hope I touched upon most of the important things in homocysteinuria cases. So the metabolism of homocysteinuria and the details about metabolism of methionine, homocysteine and different enzyme deficiencies here. I hope it helped you to understand the question. So in the question, the best choice that is available is pyridoxine as an answer and the next best choice it is cobal uh, cobalamin that is vitamin b12 and uh, folate so obviously folate is there in the choice so that is the next best choice but for uh, but the first best choice is pyridoxine because that is the uh, best uh, means uh, the uh, drug of choice for homocysteinuria patients thanks for uh, watching if you like the video, please give thumbs up and for regular updates, you can consider subscribing to my channel. See you again in another video. Till then, take care.